Well, world leaders are gathered in Egypt's Sharm El Sheikh for the annual UN climate conference, COP27. The two week long event is expected to focus largely on loss and damages, pressuring the world's largest emitters, including the US, to pick up the cost for climate impact on some of the world's poorest countries. Companies will also be under pressure to follow up on their commitments to slash their own emissions. A new Accenture study found that just 7% of the world's largest firms are on track to meet their net zero goals. Let's bring in Jean-Marc Olanier. He's the CEO of Accenture in Europe. Uh, good to talk to you today. Uh, we're in what, day two here now of COP27. Yeah. This is, of course, a two-week event. But I'm thinking back to where things were one year ago. So many companies who came to Scotland to step up and say, yes, we are going to fund the climate transition. We are going to cut our emissions. And yet here we are a year later, but there's a lot of companies facing headwinds that have sort of maybe led to them tempering some of their climate ambitions. Um, set the stage for us in terms of the climate on the corporate side and prioritizing these issues. No, thanks and good afternoon to uh, all of you. I think it's, uh, it's important to talk about the business as well, because we all know that they have a role to play in this big climate change agenda. And I think since uh, last year and a couple of years before, there is more and more companies that are willing to commit, to take true commitment in order to contribute to that agenda. But you're right, you know, awareness has made progress. And I think uh, if you uh, listen to our surveys that we communicate, we have more and more companies years after years that are generally willing to contribute and have committed to net zero agenda roughly 34% this year, and there was only 27% last year around the biggest company of the planet that are taking very strong commitment to net zero. That's a good news part of it. Europe is a bit leading the way here, if I may, uh, more than 50% of the company in Europe that are taking those commitments. So that's the good news part of the story. Awareness is there, but it's also now translate into commitment. Now you're right, all of this is not enough. First, we need more company to be aware, we need more company to take commitment, but we also need to accelerate the pace of change. If you just look at the recent trajectory in terms of CO2 emission, it's not enough. Only 7% of the company are on track and you will have to double and probably even triple the pace of CO2 emission if you want to have a chance to get to that target. So it's true transformation that will be required. John Mark, you know, to what extent have some of those ambitions or timelines been scaled back because of the macro environment that we're operating in right now. You look at especially companies in Europe, they're having to deal with higher costs, higher energy costs. I mean, these are all things that companies are looking at and saying, well, maybe we need to scale back our climate commitments if it's just for a few years. Are you seeing that or did you see that in your study? No, we see that. And to be frank, I was happy to see that despite all of this, because you're right, those are true headwinds in the very short term, companies have still increased, including in Europe, the numbers of commitments. So, you know, it doesn't mean that people can make the difference between the short term versus the longer term commitment for the climate. But nevertheless, you're right. This is certainly a topic, a worry, especially in the short term. Nevertheless, if you look at some of the benefits of the current geopolitical environment we are in for climate, there are some. First, there will be a very strong pressure, especially in Europe, on energy efficiency, which is a very good way to tackle climate change. And there will be more and more pressure for companies to reduce energy, so to reduce energy saving, uh, to reduce energy emissions. So that's an important thing. We also need to work uh, on the fact that uh, energy supply will diversify, which is also a good thing. And also sustainability seems to remain very high on the agenda despite all of this. So it is certainly a headwind, but company seems to be able to make the difference between short-term headwinds versus their longer-term commitment in order to achieve what they believe is right for the planet. And finally, reportedly, the U.S. is considering offering these carbon credits that uh, private companies would be able to buy up and essentially be able to offset some of their emissions. It's sort of a way to help major economies and also developing economies accelerate their transition. Um, how high do you think that interest level is? Because at the end of the day, the argument has always been carbon credits are mere offsets. It's not about actual emission costs. No, you need you need to be you need to do both. Frankly, uh, the offset is part of the strategy today. But I think what we are working on with all the sector is true 
CO2 emission reduction. This is what the planet needs. We absolutely need to commit to all of that. Offset carbon credit on all of this is part of the solution. It will help some businesses to do the right things a bit faster. But let's be clear, what the planet needs is less CO2 at the end. And this is a program that we need to handle. And we need to do that way faster. Jean-Marc Lanier, Accenture CEO in Europe. Uh, appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for that. Thanks a lot.